So our next concept that we look at is smart pointers. It's a so-called structural wrapper pattern. So when I first saw this, I was totally intrigued. Though that is really, in fact, smart to use our C++ concepts this way. And I, I was really stunned that you can do those things with C++ and I hope you find this as interesting as I do. Because this is really an amazing pattern and the reason why I choose to include it into the curriculum of this module. So let's have a first a recap why we need smart pointers. So we have to look into memory management. What we wanted to do is we want to keep objects over the lifetime of functions. So when, when you turn from a function, we know the stack of this function gets basically removed, the stack frame. So we have to do something. And it's not a good idea to copy 10 megabyte objects, large objects from functions um, as structures. So we do something, we have to do something smarter. And the second problem that we had was that we wanted to share a same object multiple times with different functions and users. So the solution was that we had to use the heap. So what is the heap? It's a separate memory segment. So we have the stack where we have our um, all our stack frames. Every time we call a function, it gets put onto the stack with all the local variables. But the heap is a region where we as programmers have full control to manage our data. So whenever we call a function for allocation, we get a pointer to the memory and now we are in charge of this memory. We own this memory and until it's freed by calling a function in, in C like free, the, the computer will assume this memory is occupied and we can use it as often as we want through our program, return it from a, a pointers to it in functions and manipulate it. So that's very convenient. So the heap memory is organized in pages. I'm not going back into that. So in C, we had malloc and free. Malloc to allocate memory on the heap and free to get rid of it, returning it to the pool, the create universe, where we can kind of allocate it again. So that was the idea. And this is called the dynamic memory management. It's dynamic because we can define at runtime certain properties. And this is particularly useful when we have data structures and we want to change their size at runtime. So in C++, we learned that we, we shouldn't use malloc and free, but we should use new and delete, the new keywords that are introduced, because malloc and free do not call constructors destructors, but in C++, we're dealing with objects, so we must use new and delete. Anyway, they control the allocation and deallocation of memory. In, so even new and delete is basically malloc and free, but it does syntactic sugar to call the initialization and the, of the constructor and the destructor. So we can still create an array of objects like 100 student objects by saying something like new student 100 in brackets and allocate this to a pointer. This is similar to the stack version, right? Where we said students dots 100. So in either way, we will call 100 constructor methods, if they exist, um, for 100 student objects. Just what I wanted to point out, when you allocate arrays of objects, then you need to use the delete in brackets syntax. So that was a very brief um, overview, what we learned about in the past. Now let's have a look of how we use dynamic memory management what we should know at this point. So we, we want to create a double value here with the value 2.768 and so forth. We get a pointer. Now we free this pointer again. Now we want to allocate an array. We ask the user how big should the array be? Well, yeah, we can create, we use the new operator and we create an array of a certain size. Then we go through this array and we say, compute, for example, the quadratic number i times i and print it out. So we see 0, 1, 4, 9, and so on. And then we free, using the delete operator in C++, the array. So we can also allocate objects. What are objects in that sense? I mean, instances of classes. So new demo and delete the pointer d 
the object behind the pointer. And this will call the constructor and destructor. For basic types, elementary data types like double and int, there exists no constructor in C++, but you can still use the new and delete syntax, okay? So that was how we used it so far. So there's a problem when we use the heap because we, we get new types of errors that we have to deal with as a programmer. First of all was memory leak. What happens if we forget to free memory? Well, then the memory will be occupied and if you have a, some kind of repeated procedure that more and more memory hogs, at some point the memory gets occupied and the application has to crash. So that's important, particularly for long running applications. And you see, if you ever worked with the game, the game crashed, often this is a memory leak. Second point is a dangling pointer. So it's kind of related to a memory leak. What happens if I lose the last pointer to memory location? Then basically I have no idea what memory this was, where is the location, so I can never find it again. Lastly, an invalid access that when I try to access memory that I have freed previously or have not allocated properly, then this is an invalid memory access. That's violation and often leads to crash of the applications. Now comes the point that is, you, as you will see, intriguing. In C++, we can prevent all those errors using smart pointers. 